Hey guys, welcome to Reddit Brew. Today, we're back at it again with the r slash just no mill malicious Magda saga. So if you missed part one and two, I suggest you watch them first. I will link them now, as well as in the pinned comment below. Just a quick forewarning, this part does get a little dark and possibly disturbing for some towards the end. I will timestamp that story so that you can choose to skip it if you want to. Grab your garden hoses and let's jump into part three to see what else Mill has been up to. Malicious Magda really lives up to her name. It's been quiet after the Facebook fiasco. My sister-in-law, Sylvia, is taking care of me, cooking, cleaning, and handling the big kids. Two weeks after baby was born, my husband had to go to Asia for a work thing. This has been planned for the last two years. It was expected and unavoidable. Today, April 20th, is a really hard day for me. I was in a pretty bad car accident while pregnant with my boyfriend, Victor. He died and I lost the baby. Holding baby Mo, the exact copy of my husband, is a little bittersweet. Victor was my first everything and we were about to get married. It was absolutely devastating and I still managed to graduate college with a double major and good grades. In our living room, my husband and I have a little shrine for our departed loved ones. The first time Magda saw the shrine, she got really weird for the rest of her trip to visit us. She always wanted to come visit us in April under the guise of Easter, and I let her. Without fail, she would say something snarky when I would be glum this time of year. How could I be sad when I had this beautiful family? Why aren't I just happy with the big kids? During the month of April, I light a candle and say a prayer for Victor and my lost daughter. One year, I caught Magda blowing it out. I don't know why I didn't call her out. I just relit the candle. Last year, she told me it's inappropriate to light candles for him because we weren't married and it was a long time ago, but she has no problem lighting candles for my husband's departed wife. Today, Megda sends me a large angel themed flower arrangement. I was going to post a picture, but my oldest stepson is a Redditor and asked me not to. It's very large, like something you would see in a funeral. I was by myself. Sylvia took the big kids to school and was running errands. The attention to detail is stunning. Megda knows exactly where to make it her. I didn't let the delivery guy bring it inside. After he left, I put Mo in his swing. Then Ugly cried next to the beautiful flowers. I love my husband dearly, but sometimes I miss Victor so much it hurts. I still hurt for my lost daughter. I was with him for six years. Our families are close friends. That life was stolen from me by the drunk asshole who crashed into us and didn't leave with a scratch. Not only that, but I grieve for the family I wish my my husband could have. Ever since Magda's meltdown during the Super Bowl and my husband's recent clarification in regards to her, there is a sadness in his eyes. A sadness when we're with my side of the family. He grew up cared for by a yearly changing nanny and housekeeper. It hurts him to know that he was only a lifestyle accessory. I hate her so much. I've always been kind, polite, and compromising with her, and she's used it all against me. I put up with Magda this bullshit for so long and when I put my foot down, she tries to alienate my youngest big kid from me and taunts me about my departed partner and lost daughter. I try not to really think about it, but I imagine myself dancing in a red dress on her grave. Phil died and Megda is loving the attention. So yeah, Phil died on Monday. He had a heart attack in the shower, likely dead before he hit the floor. My sill called me to inform me of the news. The call was mostly a warning of the memorial service and the funeral plans that Megda had. Megda is holding court at her house, enjoying being the grieving widow while her dills flutter around the house entertaining guests. Phil was a very successful businessman in his industry. Many people in his industry will be there, networking their arses off. Getting invited to this memorial service is a major professional coup. Megda is very aware of this and is loving it. I checked my Megda folder and sure enough, there were the summons to the memorial service and funeral with instructions on appropriate dress attire. It's 
fucking laughable. And I'm leaning towards not going at all. My husband is still in Asia for another six weeks. The boys, including the baby, are to wear black suits, white shirts, black ties. The older boys are to tie their ties in half wins or not. Phil's favorite. It is acceptable for the baby to have a clip-on tie. Daughter and I are to wear black dresses. The necklines should be high, shoulders and elbows covered. The hem of our dresses should be no shorter than one inch above our knees. No bare legs and no flat shoes. Our hair and makeup will need to be professionally done. If we go to her regular salon, they'll bill her for the services. My husband needs to come back from Asia for the funeral. He won't answer her calls, so it's up to me to convince him. He needs to be here for this difficult time for the family. If he absolutely cannot leave, Skyping will be marginally acceptable. There will be professional photographers documenting the memorial service, funeral mass, and burial. It is vital vitally important that we are photo ready. Some of these photos will be published in the major trade publication of Phil's industry. Y'all, I wish I had more eyes to roll. When I told the big kids that Phil died, my middle kid rolled her eyes and said, why couldn't the Lord take her too? They have decided that they won't go. Update, I had a long conversation with my husband last night. I made him talk about the logistics of his father's death. He is not coming home from Asia, stating, I'm missing my son's first few months of life for this project. I can easily miss my dad's funeral. My husband's aunt, Carol, Phil's youngest sister, wants me to sit at the mass and burial with her. Her husband passed away a few years ago, and her kids weren't able to fly from Florida for the funeral. We're very close, and I'm honored that she wants me there. Megda and Carol had a major falling out in the 90s. Carol is the bigger bitch, so Megda steers clear. Carol assures me that at no point Point, will Magna come anywhere near me? Phil's brother's children and grandchildren are attending, and they will make sure we are surrounded. I'm not attending the public memorial service. I have a couple of dark color pantsuits I can get into with some spanks and a prayer. I am not humoring Magda's dress code. My attire at this event will lean heavily towards soft butch. My youngest big kid is taking this better than I expected. He's still without computer and phone privileges. After sending Megda photos of the baby. He's working in my uncle's recording studio after school to keep him busy. It's really improved his musical abilities. Megda earned herself a trip to the ICU. I removed the text because my Mills flying monkeys found this post and are harassing me about it. I don't hate you. Your children don't speak to you because you failed as a parent and wouldn't protect them from her. I refuse to have someone so toxic think that they can dictate my life. They aren't my biological children, but I am still their mother. I'm leaving the comments though because to normal people, family would never Never behave this way. You know what she did, and you know she needs help. Denial will not make any of it go away. Update, we're working on an out of court settlement because Megda is desperate not to go to jail. When everything is wrapped up, I'll repost the story of what she did and the aftermath. Thank you all so much for your well wishes and support. Megda accepted our out of court settlement. Now that the legal stuff has been settled, I can talk about this stuff. Get comfortable because this is long. What she did. My husband was on an important business trip trip to Asia. His father passed away very shortly before the incident. Since we are no contact, my husband did not attend the funeral. I attended at the request of Phil's sister, my husband's favorite aunt, who has been no contact with Magda since the 90s. The only interaction with Magda's flying monkeys is when my sill came over and talked shit because I was wearing a pantsuit and no makeup instead of following Magda's directions for attire. My husband's aunt told her to go to hell. Magda was mad at me and was mad that my husband didn't show. It all escalated to this. On Thursday, Megda goes to my youngest school to pick him up. Kidnap him. She is certainly not on the pickup list. She of course gets denied and blows up. 
The cops get called because she is screaming. She tells the cops that I'm physically abusive and she wants to protect her grandchildren from me. She bites a cop and gets arrested. I don't know why, but they released her to one of my brother-in-laws pretty much immediately, likely with money. On Friday, she goes to my brother's shop where my oldest works part-time. My brother tells her to leave and my son comes out from the back to see what's going on. Megda runs to him, embraces him in a death hug, crying and blubbering about how she can't just watch her family self-destruct. She will do anything to protect him. She's sorry she hasn't acted sooner to stop my violent rages. The cops come and Megda peels out in her Mercedes. On Sunday, the kids and I were at church and came home to a bunch of cop cars and animal control at our house. The cops told us that my mother-in-law broke into the house, made a mess, and killed my elderly 12 pound little dog. This sent our 75 and 90 pound pit bulls into a fury, mauling her. The neighbor heard the screaming, saw the broken window, and Megda's car in the driveway, connected the three and called the cops. The cops tased the dogs to get them to stop attacking her. Megda was rushed to the hospital. She picked up hospital acquired pneumonia. We were told that she had bites on 60% of her body, but that was a dramatic overstatement. She had some bites on her face, neck, forearms, and hands. However, she also broke her hip, had her front teeth knocked out, and cracked some ribs from falling. The inside of our house was trashed. Broken mirrors, picture frames, dishes strewn everywhere. My art studio was a mess. Thankfully, the kids' rooms were unscathed. As I'm cleaning up, I notice everything destroyed was mine. The photo frames smashed were of my family members. The dishes she destroyed were dishes I bought from Mexico. The chair she shat on, yes, there was human poo on a chair, was one that I bought. She opened all the drawers in the master bedroom and destroyed most of my clothes with scissors and bleach. She destroyed all of my makeup worth thousands of dollars because I have a Sephora problem. She stuffed all my makeup brushes, a hairbrush, and my flat iron in the toilet. We got the dogs back after a couple of days. The shelter staff remarked on how docile and well-mannered they were. Since then, they do not let me or the baby out of their sight. If I put the baby down for a nap, my female stands watch next to the crib. Megda is completely unrecognizable now. There is no amount of plastic surgery to make her resemble her former self. Speaking is excruciatingly painful due to her facial injuries, and since her hands were badly injured, she can't text or email her vitriol either. She is completely dependent on others for her care. Her house is now a mini rehab hospital instead of the sterile museum it was previously. When I made my previous post, SIL 2 and 3 blew up my phone with abusive texts. They blew up the kids' phones with abusive texts. Someone called CPS anonymously, saying that I was letting the kids drink and do drugs in the house. They also said I would leave the baby with the kids while I went and got high. CPS came to our house. They spoke to each of the kids privately. The kids described Megda's campaign of harassment ever since I announced my pregnancy. The CPS worker thanked us for our time. Our house is clean, there's tons of food in the house, and the kids are obviously well cared for. We haven't heard back from them. I got an anonymous email saying I needed to delete my Reddit thread or else I was going to get the next time I walked my dogs alone. That's why I deleted the post. My nephew, Louis, patron saint of garden hoses, tracked the IP address down to Golden Boy Grandson's office park. He denied it when called out and said I should go back to Mexico if I don't feel safe in LA. I found the contact information for Golden Grandson's boss and forwarded her the email with a short explanation of what happened. After an internal review, Golden Grandson was found to have sent that email from his workstation. He's been fired. His father called my husband, ranting about destroying the family, and my husband stayed stoned-faced. 
thanking him for expressing his thoughts and then told him to f off. My husband has really exploited on Magda's desperation to stay out of jail. He told me when he was on the plane coming home from Asia, he thought about all the times he compromised to please her and how it meant nothing. He thought about how his brother's children are not only no contact with Magda, but they're no contact with their parents too and inspired him. He got back at her using the things she cared about most after her looks, which were now gone, money. We gave her lawyer two weeks to mull over the evidence. We have the video footage of her vandalizing our home, the text message logs, all of the emails, sworn statements from her granddaughters she visited on her East Coast trip, and copies of the fictitious reports she made to immigration and the health department, getting my brother's shop raided. We told her lawyer she can settle out of court, or we can go to trial with a guarantee of a civil lawsuit afterwards. The evidence was so damning, our lawyer was ecstatic to represent it. She settled. We're still in shock because Megda never rolls over. We are receiving a substantial amount of money and other assets. There was a binding agreement that Megda is not to contact us or any members in my family directly or via proxy. If she violates this, we will sue her again. The same goes for the flying monkeys, my husband's brothers, and the Sills. The inheritance my brothers were promised will no longer be there due to the high cost of her care and paying out the settlement. She has an RN and nurse assistant there 24-7. Her life is gone. She is in constant pain, bed bound, and the cherry on top is being cared for by legal immigrants who converse amongst themselves in a different language. Her worst nightmare. Amazing. We haven't decided if we want to stay in this house after everything that's happened, but I have a sentimental attachment, as this was my aunt's house. We bought it because she was retiring to Mexico. It started out as a three-room shack and slowly morphed into a fairly large house. My uncle was an excellent carpenter slash tile layer slash mason. Some of my happiest childhood memories are here. I wanted my kids to have happy memories here too. Also, if I wanted a house comparable to this, we would have to leave the area. This Magda bullshit has tainted this house. When I look at the backyard, I don't see the memories memory of my youngest slowly dog paddling around the pool after he learned to swim anymore. Instead, I replay the video footage of my insane mill beating my little dog to death. So that's where we're at. Again, ladies and gentle dudes of Just No Mill, your stories and supportive comments helped me keep my cool. I wouldn't have handled this ish as well on my own. Jeez, that was a lot. Megda is even more unhinged than I thought. She destroyed and tainted a home and killed an innocent dog out of spite. I honestly want to vomit. At least Mill is finally getting some well-deserved justice. Her beauty is gone. Her health is also gone for likely a very long time. And other than her flying monkeys, her family has completely alienated her. She deserves she deserves all of this. She deserves the miserable future that she set up for herself. I wish that she and her flying monkeys were in jail, but it has been established that Mill is very rich, so it's highly unlikely that any of them will ever face jail time. She could get sent to a psych ward, but it would probably just be of resort magnitude, just like the rehab facility she was sent to. It's so unfortunate and sad that Ultra rich people never get the repercussions they deserve. But again, at least some justice was served here. However, on the bright side, I am so proud of OP's husband. He has truly done a 180 and he couldn't have chosen a better time to do it. But wait, there's more. Nope, it is not over. The demon has not been fully slain quite yet. So I will see you guys next time for part four of Malicious Magda. Bye!